Hello and welcome to another broadcast of Deep Cough in the Deep. I'm your host, Jeremy Lopez, and today I want to talk to you about getting out of credit card debt. You know, did you know the average America right now is in debt up to the ears in thousands of dollars on credit card? What I want to talk to you for a little bit is basically my testimony of how God delivered me from being indebted on credit cards. And do you know the, uh, the Bible says to be a lender and not a borrower? We've got to change our mindset to realize that we're the ones that are called to, to, to lend as opposed to borrow. And I want to be able to show you and teach you how to access that power, you know, from knowledge to be able to get out of debt, to be one that is actually the one that is lending to people as opposed to borrowing. You know, we're, we're told for so many years on credit cards that it's so easy to just use this credit card and you can pay it off at the end of the month or pay the minimum at the end of the month and hey, they're going to give you a, a great deal by, you know, just car charging you $25 a month in your minimum payment when you might owe $10,000. Well, if you think about it, the average of the APR on, on new credit cards is 14.35%. That's a lot. That's literally robbery, which means you're being charged so much. So if you owe $5,000, for example, on your credit card, you actually don't owe $5,000. You actually owe about seven dollars to $10,000 because of interest alone from the APR. So if you're paying your minimum balance every month, for example, let's say if you owe $500 and let's say your minimum balance is $10 or $15. Now you might think, hey, that's a great deal, you know, because I'm just paying $10 a month. But that $10 averages for you owing $500 to about seven to $900. So you're gonna to have to think realistically to realize that when you pay your $10, you're literally being charged interest off of that, the, the main amount, which is 500. So you never wanna pay your minimum balance. One of the things I want you to understand is if you're in credit card debt, you first and foremost, the first thing you wanna realize is never pay your minimum balance. You always wanna go above and beyond. If you can double it or even triple it, that's what you want to do. First of all, we don't want to be in credit card debt, but I want to speak to those who actually are in credit card debt because a lot of you are saying, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm, I'm caught in this jam, if you will, where you know I owe all this money, I owe maybe three and four credit cards. I didn't realize how far it would go with me. So I want to share that with you for a moment. What I had to do in my life years ago was I had accumulated, I think, about $10,000 of debt. Now, when I did that, I had it about on about four or five different credit cards. Now I'm sitting here thinking, God, I don't know what to do because I'm paying minimum a month, I'm even paying double a month, and yet I'm still getting charged all this interest. So you could imagine on four credit cards, you know, averaging out about maybe 2,000 to 2,500 on each one, how much uh, interest I was accumulating, especially if it was the APR was 14.35 or something around that nature. So, you know, you never, uh, you know, you never get out of debt. You're always accumulating more interest. So what I did was I basically found a credit card at the moment and, and, and do research on this. A lot of times people offer credit cards that are uh, interest free on a balance transfer. So what I did for myself was I actually transferred money from the four. I, I, I combined the four, put them together, and then charged them on this uh, one credit card that had zero percent interest. Now what I did then was I began to really work really hard to make sure I went above and beyond by not paying the minimum balance, but even paying you know double or triple the, uh, the payment amount. The reason why, because most of the times in the fine print of credit cards, when you have a uh, one time only, you know, 0% interest, for example, what you can do is it might say, you know, we're gonna give you 0% for a year or for just that certain amount that you've transferred. And see, the catch to them is they want to be able to get you in new, uh, new purchases. So let's say, for example, if you transfer $5,000 know, to uh, an interest-free credit card, and they said, hey, you know, it's interest-free. Well, how they get you is all the other purchases you're, you're going to start making from that point on. They're going to tack on all of that interest rate on top of that credit card that you have a 0% interest rate on the one on the balance you transferred. So you never want to do that. The main goal is to get out of debt, not to charge more. So what you want to do in that situation is I combined all mine, put them on an interest-free credit card, and then tripled my payment. Because see, it's, it's easier when you consolidate it to be able to triple the balance to be able to pay it off quicker. When you're having four different credit cards, for example, like I did, and you have the interest rate is very high on all four of them, and you're making the minimum payment or even paying a little bit more, it's always going to keep you in the hole. You'll never be able to recover ever. 
So what I did for me was I combined it all, consolidated it all into a credit card that was interest free. So look out there if you can, find a credit card if you have to that's interest free. And when you do that, uh, you know, consolidate everything and pay that thing off. That way, see it's easier for you to make one big payment as opposed to five or six different payments. So take the time and make that place where you can consolidate and pay a big lump sum of money every month to get out of debt quicker. The other thing is most people don't realize is they take all their credit cards and they cut them up completely because being in debt causes a fear factor to come upon you and that's a scary thing, is it not? And they cut all their credit cards up. Wrong idea. You never want to cut all your credit cards up. You want to keep your credit con uh, constantly flowing out there to where your credit is always going to be rotating. So what you want to do is cut up all your credit cards except for one good one. And when you do that, when you've cut off all your other credit cards, it reports back to the credit bureau that what you've done is you've canceled it. And what you always want to do is make sure you're never, ever, ever 30 days past due. If you're ever late one time, it'll stay on your credit history, sometimes seven, sometimes 10 years. So what you want to do is you want to be able to cut up the other ones and then pay those off if you have not consolidated them. If you have consolidated them, what will happen is it'll show up on your credit report as being paid off and then you've closed the account. And then what you want to do is follow up behind yourself. Follow up with one of the credit bureaus to make sure that they have closed the account and that it's been paid in full. That way it never shows any late charges or anything else as far as being 30 days past due, 60 days past due. You never want to be late on any payment at all. So once you've done that, then what you want to do is consolidate everything to that one credit card, take that one credit card, then make as many uh, big payments as you can to get it paid off. Even, did you know that even if you are on a credit card, if you have, let's say, 13 or 14 or 15 percent interest rate from the APR, you can even contact that credit card company. Many people don't know this. But you can contact that credit card company and you can actually negotiate the, the, the credit, uh, the rate that you have at the moment. You can negotiate with them and say, look, 14.35, I noticed you have a new card that just came out and you're giving a special of, let's say, 8 percent. Well, then what you do is you negotiate with them. You would be amazed at the number of credit card companies who will actually work with you and say, well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and, and transfer all this to a new low interest rate. See, it never fails. You have not because you ask not. You always want to negotiate and call them and talk to them. You know, the Bible even says, come and reason with me, the Lord says. You can reason with people and find favor with them. If they don't know you and don't know your voice and don't know your situation, they're never going to do anything for you. Because the bottom line is, they're out to take as much money from you as they can. But what they want to do is if you talk to them, they'll actually work with you because they think if I work with you, get you in a lower interest rate, what will happen is they can turn around and, you, and believe that you'll go and say, hey, awesome, I got a lower interest rate, so I'll keep on charging more because my interest rate's lower. The dumb idea. But for them, it's a smart idea because what they'll do is they want to catch you to make more purchases. For them, it's all about longevity. So they want to keep you into their, into their system to where you will constantly be indebted to them. So once you've negotiated with them, call them up, talk to them. You know, another thing you can do is call your credit bureau, call these companies and ask them, you know, uh, Equifax, call these companies and make sure your credit report, uh, everything has been up to date, it's been cleared off, what needs to be cleared off. Uh, things are, if it shows a, a, large, a late charge and you know you haven't been late, then go ahead and, and, and negotiate with that. Let them realize this is not true. And so you want to go in there and you want to deal with that situation. A lot of people don't realize that credit reports are free to you. You never have to pay for it. If you come across a company who says, hey, you know what, you can buy it for this amount of money. No, you don't. You, you're, you're entitled to get one free, I think, for, for every year. So what you want to do is call one of these companies, get it free for you. Once you've got it free, look it over. Make sure everything's crystal clear on there. Everything's up to date on there. Now back to your credit cards. When it deals with getting out of debt, this is what I did. I consolidated everything, put it on an interest-free credit card. Once that credit card was finally paid off, did I cut up that credit card? No, I kept it. You always want to make sure you keep a credit card, one credit card, because, and then every once in a while, maybe charge five or ten dollars on there and, and pay it off before for the end of the month. One of the smartest things my grandfather always taught me is if you don't have the money for it, don't buy it. And I always stuck to that principle. If you don't have the money for it, do not purchase it. 
So if you don't have the money for something, by any means, don't purchase it unless it's something you have to have. The majority of times, most things you don't have to have. But in certain cases of life, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. But if you can't afford it, don't get it, if you can help it. Now, what you want to do is, if you have the money in the bank, for example, let's say if you have a charge of something that's $25, you're debt-free on your credit card, and you want to take that $25 to keep your credit rotating, which you have to do and you need to do. You know, even though you don't use credit cards anymore, you always want to make sure you charge a little bit and make sure you already have the money in advance, turn right around the same day, pay it off. I have one credit card that every once in a while I'll, I'll put money on there, we do for our business, put money on there and then instantly turn around and pay it off. The reason why, because once again it keeps your credit rotating and it will help build your credit because it shows that your credit is constantly rotating, you're constantly charging on it, but yet you're constantly paying it off right then and there. It builds your credit rate up. That's what you want to do. So these are some principles and some ideas that I can uh, give to you because the Bible says we suffer from a lack of knowledge. So I want you to take these ideas, do the best you can do, and get out of debt. Credit cards companies are racking up the money. Did you know that most people, the Bible um, talks about you know, being debt free, you know, walking in the year of Jubilee where things are being paid off. And so what I want you to do is learn to walk in your year of Jubilee. Get in the, the idea in your mind, this year I'm becoming debt free. Do you know Americans, there's over $20 billion, $20 billion in penalty fees from credit cards a year, $20 billion. Did you know statistics say $20 billion could actually feed two-thirds of the world's hunger problem? $20 billion, two-thirds of the world. Amazing, is it not? That shows me that people are suffering because they do not have the knowledge they possess to get out of debt, and they buy into these schemes of, hey, use this credit card, take a vacation, pay it off at the end of the year. That's not wise. It's not being a good steward of your money. You want to be able to get out of debt to where you're able to be the head and not the tail. You're being the master and lord over your money, not someone else being the lord and master over your money and, and telling you what to do. You want to be able to tell it what to do. You want to be able to take your money, invest your money to where you have the power over your money to say, I summons you to go out here and bring more money back to me. Multiply it. Invest it. That's what the Bible talks about. Do you remember in the parable where, the, uh, where Jesus came on the scene and he, he, he mentioned the parable to the people and said about the master and the three um, workers and how the master came and, and gave these three workers a certain lump sum of money and, and some of them were afraid that they hid it. They didn't know how to invest it. They didn't know how to multiply it. They hid it. And then another one went and invested their money. And do you know that Jesus, and investments are like gambling. Absolutely it is. But God honors faith more than he does you hiding your money under a bushel because you're scared to death. You know what Jesus cursed? Jesus cursed the person who withheld their money. So what you want to do is make sure your credit is rotating. Make sure your money is working for you, multiplying. Keep your money busy. Don't let it be controlling you. You control it. You control it of what it needs to bring back to you as opposed of it taking from you. Be the head and not the tail this day. I want to pray for you real quick if I could. Amen. I know many of you out there are in debt to credit cards, and I know it's a hassle. I know it's a pain. It's a, it's a fear factor. I was there. $10,000 in debt. I was there. Well, you look at your life and you say, is there any escape for me? And, and, and you're finding yourself paying off, paying it off, paying it off, paying it off year after year, but you still accumulate in interest because you've taken you know, this time of saying, I'm going to pay my payments on time, but you see, you don't realize you need to pay more than that. And you find yourself saying, I'm, I'm in debt. I can't get out of it. Year after year, I can't get out of it. There is a way of escape for you. And Jesus is the answer. He can give you the principles you need. So take the time, do some research. Buy some books by Susie Orman. Buy some books by Hill Harper. Buy some books out there of people who know what they're talking about when it deals with money. And take these principles and ideas I just gave you. Run with them. Trust me. It'll lead you out of debt into freedom and liberty. Amen. I want to pray for you real quick. Father God, in Jesus' name, I just pray, Lord, that you'll begin to give these people the wisdom, uh, the knowledge it takes, Father, to get them out of debt. Father, lead them to a, a place of knowledge. Knowledge is power. Lead them to a place, Father, where they can gain knowledge to know how 
to get out of debt, to be debt free, Father. You said who the Son sets free is free indeed. And Father, we know you're the Son that will arise with healing in its wings. So I pray today, Father, you begin to give them the knowledge they need and arise, Father, as that eagle, that Lord, the healing of their financial arena, Father, can be healed, Father, through you, because you're the God, uh, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Father, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to tell you about something that might help you out. We have a series called Your Wealth Perception. Now, your wealth perception is something that will very much benefit you and empower you because what we talk about is how the thoughts in your mind, if that's not prospering, you'll never prosper in the natural. And so look on the website, identitynetwork.net. Look up your wealth perception. It's a two CD set that will help empower you. We also have it as an audio download. It will empower you to prosper your mind where you'll have a grist, a grasp, if you will, on your money in the natural to know how to produce it and how to make it work for you. We also have a really good one called The Laws of Financial Progression. It's a five CD set series that also has a book. You can buy the combo. It'll help you get out of debt. It'll also help you and teach you the principles of tithing, sowing seed, giving offerings, and investments. So I bless you today and I thank God today that you're gaining much wisdom and knowledge to get debt free. Have a blessed day.